All right, thank you everyone. I'd love to introduce Richland Tam is going to come back on stage and she's actually going to be leading our panel discussion today, uh, Lost in Translation, Fostering Good Cross-Functional Collaboration. I think we've got a lot of people here from a lot of different areas of tech, so this should be interesting to everyone. Let's give them a big round of applause, please. Thank you. Hope everyone had something to drink in the break, something to eat. Welcome again to our online uh, viewers. We appreciate all the comments and support. We hope that you keep the discussion going. And now we are here. So I'm honored to be sitting with these power women um, who will be introducing <laughs> themselves. We'll be talking a little bit about cross-functional teams. Um, what works, what doesn't work, some F-up stories, um, and we'll kind of get into it. So thank you very much for being here. And I'd like to hand over to Honey then to introduce herself first. Thank you. You are a power woman as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Honey. I'm a project manager at Idealo. And uh, cross-functionality is basically my life. Uh, we don't come in a bunch. Like, you don't throw a couple of project managers on a project. Mm -hmm. We're useless, basically, in that constellation. So I'm always the only project manager. So everyone around me speaks a different language. At least that's my feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a pretty risky day-to-day -day life. But it, it's fun. <laughs> so um, my name is Carolina. I am a user experience designer. And when I came out of art school, I wanted to build products that were meaningful. And obviously, I thought tech was quite a natural way to go. And I have been working in Germany for the last five, six years, five years, in uh, German tech companies and having to work with, well, not just Germans, as they're not German, but also developers and product <laughs> owners. And that is a uh, challenge as a <laughs> designer sometimes. <laughs> and I'm quite happy to share some of the lessons learned, and also maybe have a discussion about it. <laughs> and I hand over to Natalie. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Natalie. I'm a team lead here at Idealo. I've been here for four months now for a machine learning team. And uh, yeah, my team is cross-functional, so my day-to-day -day is basically cross-functional work. Uh, I have a product a manager in my team and engineers, machine learning engineers. Um, and I'm also involved in other cross-functional projects across the, the company uh, and have a, originally a background in, in psychology um, and um, HR. So, so that's where I'm coming from and I'm super excited to talk about this and be here today. Cool, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Irache. I've been working uh, at Axel Springer for two years already and I'm a security engineer, which is also rare. <laughs> Um, and yeah, my life is mostly uh, working very cross-functional. Um, I'm helping 40 developer t development teams here in the company to improve the security of the applications. So I have to talk to backend people, front-end people, team leads, also management above us, also other security teams. So it's very hit and miss, and sometimes you do things right, and sometimes you don't, but it's very fun. Awesome, thank you very much. Um, actually, to continue with what you were saying, can you describe a little bit more on um, what are the good things about cross-functional teams um, for working? You get to know a lot of people. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, which sometimes is super cool because then uh, like you know where to find the information you're looking for. And other times someone looks at you and I'm like, do we know each other? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> um, And you never get bored, I would say. Like, it's always a challenge, and you have to reinvent yourself and uh, see how you can change the way you communicate to talk to which person, like, different people. And I, I kind of like that. It's interesting to say uh, the way that you communicate. Maybe, um, Natalie, you can tag on that. With so many different people that you're interacting with, and as you mentioned, Irachi, the, the communication has to shift. So. Um, how does that work, actually? How do you know that it's successful to change and to adapt? Yeah, it's a um, great question. I think um, I always sort of go back to the fundamentals of like what I learned in psychology and, and really listening, um, asking questions, uh, and not really making assumptions about people and their experience or knowledge about things. 
Um, and that sort of really helped me navigate the whole um, environment of people just being from very different contexts, yeah, I would say. <laughs> but it's, a, it's also a lot to think about and carry because if there's so many different layers and you have to consider all that, how do you not lose yourself in uh, trying to adapt for everyone else, but what are you, your needs and what are you about how you need to have things going? Mm, uh, this is ex actually what I wanted to say. Like you learn a lot about yourself as well. If you're not in your comfort zone, using the vocabulary you use in your everyday life with people who definitely get you being like, ah, yeah, roadmaps, yeah, yeah, post-its, we get you. <laughs> and then starting to talk to people who look at a black screen with code on it every day, right? So it's a very different perception of the company you're working for and the everyday world, basically. And so I learned so much. And one thing is to, for the one time, it is it is a is a wave. It's basically a going forward, trying to understand people, also leaning or like basically taking yourself back for a lot of times, you know, just listening and not trying to basically um, overarch people all the time. But at the same time, sometimes it's like going back to your own small house and then thinking about what do you want in life. I actually very much like the talk we had before from Zalando, exactly talking about this. There has to be times where you think about what do I want, like right. how do I, and get feedback all the time. Like, this yeah. is a very hurtful thing I also learned. It's just <laughs> constantly asking, okay, is this what I'm thinking? How I appear speaking in meetings? Is this actually what is the truth? And then people, in, if you work in a nice company, people will actually tell you the truth about that. And that's sometimes it's crazy to hear that it's exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's yeah. a really hard thing to do. I, I mean, I love everything that you said, <laughs> but on a day to day, um, as a designer, I work with, I don't know, a lot of developers and I have to solve very complex uh, questions in a very simple way. And so it takes me a long time to find, you know, the right idea. And then I get this idea and then I present it to the developers and I'm like, yay. And they're like, no, we can't build it. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean you can't build it? And they're like, no. And then they start telling me all these complex stuff. And I'm like, let's rewrite the code. Let's rebuild the system. I'm like, come on. It's so, and um, as a, I don't know, the more you grow into your confidence as a designer, you really know that this idea is really good. And sometimes you are trying to push very much. And it's really hard at that point to be like, OK, this is a time where I have to go into my little house and breathe <laughs> yeah. and listen to the other uh, part. So it's a really, it's a really hard lesson. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think, I mean, I've, I've run into this situation uh, a couple of times, and I sometimes catch myself uh, before it happens now, luckily, um, because there were some failures in the past, but um, that I can also celebrate today as uh, learnings. Um, but yeah, not, not an easy one. Maybe you can uh, share a little bit about <laughs> uh, how were some of those failures or and, and the lessons learned there? Oh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, unfortunately not just one example. <laughs> um, but uh, so we are building a, a software for newsrooms um, at NMT here, Axel Springer. And it's a lot of complex stakeholders, a lot of complex end users who are producing news. It's a landscape that is also changing a lot. A lot of requirements because they're very strong stakeholders, like Build and Welt, they really know what they want. And so as a little designer, you're really trying to put everything together and then you're like, okay, this is simplicity, this is elegant, this is the solution. And, and then you ask the developers for a feedback session, which is, I mean, in a nice way to put it, not a feedback session, it's like, dear developer, I tell you this idea <laughs> and, and, and please build it. And then when they're like, no, we can't, and you're like, come on, are you being lazy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you think, you can't tell it, you can't say it. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it did sometime, one time I really pushed through and I was really, I, I, I thought, okay, this time make it, like make it happen. And I didn't know I was being seen as hostile or aggressive mm, because I was really trying to sell this really hard. And 
at some point, I was asked by somebody in the team, do you actually like working with us? And I was like, well, y yes, I do. And they're like, well, it doesn't seem so because you're always so, y sometimes you're like very happy and bubbly and sometimes you're like, let's do this. <laughs> and so, and that's, that, that moment was really like, okay, red flag, you have to change your, um, and you have to give in. And sometimes, it's really hard, but just sometimes when you give in, things happen. Hmm. Instead hmm. of sometimes when you really push, 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 there is a resistance, but sometimes you're like, okay, you know, you give in and then it magic happens. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is there a psychology reason <laughs> or explanation behind <laughs> this? Um, uh, probably. <laughs> I would, I mean, <laughs> what, what, um, what I think about when I hear that is, is sort of um, general group dynamics and, and this need in, in groups for someone to always take the role of an opposer. Richland, you, you'll know <laughs> what I'm talking about. And, um, and to embrace that and be like, oh, there's someone um, who, who is there to help promote like, or make the product better um, and go against it. So, so um, I really thought about that when you, when you said that and it actually enriches uh, our ability to create a better product, to have people who challenge and question and, and are critical um, of the things we want to build. So, so that's what I thought about. <laughs> also, what I like uh, of about your story is that uh, the excuse I made is that people attach you, your face, your personality, to a pattern, mostly. So it might be two meetings, maybe, where you appeared as being you know, a little bit more mm -hmm. consequent on what you want, or even only one. And then suddenly people start to flip around your character or your personality, being like, mm. you are always that mm. person who does dot, dot, dot. And it happened to me kind of the same. Like, I went on a project um, which kind of postponed for a long, long time. And I went on an over-communicated, you know, on the status, being like, ah, guys, this project is coming, wait for it. And it didn't come. Like, it took four months in the end until we actually started. And so I realized that over-communication in two meetings only led to the point that appearing in other meetings, people tend to see my face as someone who doesn't really provide any beneficial information. So I went to even more meetings and was wondering why people still didn't get that you know, the kickoff is coming. So this is exactly... I guess the, the same thing of be aware of what impact you actually can have in only a few meetings. Like, and, and then if you get the feedback of how you appear, how can you change it, right? Or do you want to change it, actually? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I'd be curious if anyone else on the panel would like to answer that. How do you change it? How do you deal with that? <laughs> Um, I think for us, like as a security team, feedback is very important um, because for me, I know what I'm talking about when I talk about risks or being hacked or like this other thing, vulnerabilities, and then like for developers, most of the time that's like, yeah, sure, nothing happened yet, so why do I have to spend my time on this? And I'm like, you should because it could happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, now, for example, we're introducing two new tools. Uh, one for cloud security and one for web security. And for me, like, it's a huge improvement because then I can see uh, the security of like these 40 teams at once. But then I don't use the team, the tool as a developer. So I really need the feedback from all of the teams and people use different languages, different, they use it different. So for me, like all the time, I'm like, hey, do you have feedback on this? Do you understand how the tool works? Is it actually useful for you? because the teams are so different. Like we have teams with like, I don't know, 10, 15 people, and then teams with, with only three people. Mm -hmm. And they're like developed such different stuff that I don't know. Like if I don't ask for feedback, then I'm blind and I don't know what, what to do. So it's very, very important. Um, and I ask almost in every meeting uh, I go to, I'm kind of, I feel sometimes like a mom, like, hi. I'm here to help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need your feedback. It's useful. Um, we really take into account this. And if you need something else, I'm here to help. Um, please contact me. I'm here to help. <laughs> so this is mostly what I do. And then sometimes people actually contact me. Do you, do you get feedback when you ask for it? Um, I sometimes ask for feedback, and I get no 
depends. And I present stuff and I'm always like, give me feedback, give me yeah. feedback. It's like silence in the room. It depends. Sometimes <laughs> I give workshops and then I'm like, hey, feedback. And there it's just silence. Um, but then people write to me. I always say like, hey, you can find me in Slack, Teams, just write to me or like to my boss or like, don't, it doesn't have to be now like on camera, just like here, just you can just text me and uh, yeah, like sometimes people actually do that like a few days later and I'm like, oh cool, like it actually worked, you know? Yeah. I th I think with that, what can be helpful is to ask for more specific on what. I think sometimes people mm -hmm. are so like lost with what feedback do you need? You know, it's so big. There's there's so many layers of that on like, did I feel energized? Did I feel yeah. like the content was valuable? Did I feel the slides were well structured? There's so many layers. So I think if, if you're more specific about what feedback you want, it can help. Yeah, I think um, that's very true, yeah. yeah. That's a nice one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would just, um, to your point about like changing, I think um, it is really hard once you put in a certain box to change that. And mm -hmm. I think that's what you were sort of talking about. And um, I, I, would, I would tackle it in more of an individual, like who, did, who gave you this feedback? Maybe like engage in a conversation and sort of try to embrace it and be like, oh wow, thank you, you know, first of all, for showing me this thing I didn't know and, and engage in a one-on-one, in, in -on -one. that's how I would. But I wonder, is it, was it for more than like four or five people or? Ah, it's just my assumption. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, no, that's also no, another thing. No, right? yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a feedback I got uh, from, from one or two people, but in general, I think we all know that over communication is, is nothing you, sh you should do, right? And there's definitely a way to change. Like what, what I took out of this is um, if, if you want people to, you know, remember you somehow, and you're planning something which might go out of the normal. Like for me, it was a five week sprint, which made everyone block the work they're on right now. And I was asking them to engage in this five week sprint. And it is a quite unusual thing. And it takes a lot of resources and a lot of capacity, mobilization of a larger group, basically. And what I did then is, you know, or what I would do differently uh, next time is um, finding channels which are a little bit more disruptive. So maybe it wasn't only out of the fact that I appeared twice in like all hands uh, and said something people already knew. They were like, okay, what is new about this? We finally want to start working. Um, rather send out a different meeting. Uh, being like, oh, here before the kickoff Q&A session, invite all these people and even if they don't come, uh, and ask the questions, they see something in their calendar which is new. So it is a kind mm. of disruptive way to make people mm. aware of the fact that something else is going to mm. happen. Instead of using the channels which are already there, there is so much information flowing around organizations and if you appear in this weeklies, all hands, you know, people are working in parallel sometimes, you know, not really, really listening to what is happening yeah. and this is what I mainly took out of it um, and definitely think that it is totally changeable. Also, maybe appear in dailies of teams, uh, which they don't expect you to be in. Being like, who's this person? What does she want to tell <laughs> us? <laughs> kind of. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, like the novelty of it. Yeah. 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 That and that like communicating in a more maybe personal way instead of being in an all sure. hand, being in a daily, so you're a bit more personal and it's a more smaller prominent. group. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like lessons have been strategic about where you communicate, strategic about how you communicate, uh, sometimes going into your own little space to know what do you want actually, and then gaining feedback um, and kind of getting a feeling yeah. of is what I'm saying really translating what I want to be said. Uh, so these kind of sound like some key things we've talked about. Is there anything else? Uh, if we were to give advice to someone here in the crowd who might be in uh, struggling with this, <laughs> I mean, so something that helps me, um, and we're starting to do because, yeah, whenever we say no, security is important, people are like, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then what we're now doing, we have like this monthly meeting with team, the different development teams, and then they see a face, you know, and they see a person or two people, and we talk about like detailed stuff, but just like security as a concept. And this creates like this kind of relationship or bond to the to the other person, and I think that has helped me a lot. Like not only to the team lead because the team leads are normally not that 
um, I mean, maybe they used to be developers, but not, you not, it doesn't have to be that way, so they're not that technical into that, uh, the software. But also we have like a specific security contact, and that helps us bring the message through way better because we already know this person and it's different for me to send a message to a team I don't know than for me to talk to someone that's interested in security and then this person broadens the message in their team because they already have that, that tr trust and I have trust with this other person so the message hmm. gets across better. A trust is a nice one, yeah. 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 Cross functionally well. Yeah. yeah, and personal so relationships, right? That, yeah. It's completely different how you perceive a topic if you find someone yeah. actually sympathetic. Yeah, oh. true. So that has helped me a lot. In the like, we've started doing this like I think a year ago, and then you can see teams are way more receptive, mm. and they, the feedback comes more often. People come to you with more questions, which is nice, and but yeah, it takes time. Yeah, trust. Like having a more personal relation that has yeah. definitely helped me. So it's one of the things I've tried in order to avoid these situations where they've seen me sort of like maybe conflictive if they know me better and yeah. I know them better and I know they are, I don't know, I know the name of the cats yeah. and <laughs> you know, yeah. it helps yeah. to be like, oh, how is uh, Gigi uh, yeah. or how is, or your son, and, 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 or like and, and so yeah. you, you know, you already like, yeah. The mood is relaxed, you do a bit of chit chat, and you yeah. instead of going straight to like, all right, yeah. <laughs> let's do this, it's a bit more relaxed, and that really helps to work better together. But I'm also curious because it sounds like a lot of work. Oh, to yeah. Consider. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know about y'all listening, but I'm the like, reward. I, have the reward really I have to think about the cats, I have to think about the kids, and all that. Uh, and, and so, how do you ensure that, okay, now you identify maybe what your needs are, but how do you ensure that? maybe others are also kind of aware or able to help you out. I mean, what are some things there that can be done? Nobody's it perfect also. Yeah, right? exactly. All of us are learning, I guess. But actually, like the, f like the experience I met is it just happens. Like if people find you sympathetic, if you have some kind of, you know, relationship, it, you don't need to ask twice. Like people like to help in general. Um, and yeah. if you ask for help, it helps if they know you. <laughs> um, it basically changes the speed, I think, in, in which they would help you or prioritize you over other things. But we, in general, do these things, and uh, I really like how it always evolves. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so in your experiences, it's not always one-sided, where you're considering all these things. Mm. Yeah, I would say it's also your role modeling the behaviors you want to see, right? So if, if there is a sense of reciprocity when you interact with people. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that it does come then also um, like from the other side. Um, depends on how how far you are in the relationship. Um, but I think yeah, what what also really sort of um, I thought about is is establishing trust before you need that person, mm. or in a speci specific projects. Um, I had that for example. Um, where a project manager reached out to me just to have an intro call and then um, later on needed me for a project. And I, it was so smart, actually, I thought, because then we had already sort of had an engagement and connection. And then when they needed me, I was like much more ready to be it like, okay. It must be actually one of the project managers sitting there. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <yes>, probably. <laughs> I mean, something that we also do as the security team, we just escalate things. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, because so there's the other way. <laughs> yeah. Really. Nothing like, else works. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we need to fix stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's sh and then they're like, ah, oh, yeah, you needed this, right? I'm like, yes, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you both told you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But to tie in back from the kind of box people put us in, if we if we escalate, which might be the right thing to do in that moment because it's just not working. Yeah. What do we, how do we deal with these labels that sometimes, I think even one of our online viewers was writing a comment about uh, dealing with being labeled aggressive then or hostile. I mean, I know we kind of touched on it again, but maybe to bring it back when we escalate and it was the right thing to do. But with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. especially as a woman, it's easily, you know, a woman in a group of men and you're pushing through your idea because it's yeah. important to you. And then easily labeled, okay, she's an aggressive woman. That's yeah. super, super hard and you know it, but you have to 
be stronger because you are more than that label. Mm. Yeah. And if you do an error once, it doesn't define you. Uh, that's really important. It's not because you once have done something wrong or twice that it is who you are. And when that it's happened twice to you, you are more likely to have such a deep learning out of it that you will never do it again, mm. probably. So it's really, um, it's super hard, but to change the, the, the things around. Yeah, I love that you said that we aren't, we aren't our labels, uh, especially the labels that other people are giving to us that yeah. maybe don't even really know us, but know us in one meeting. Um, I love that. I, I can only relate a little bit because uh, I think someone mentioned Solana, uh, not Solana, someone did mention Solana, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> someone mentioned uh, Gallup strengths as well. And I know um, command is on one of top of my strengths. And whenever I had to tell Sonia, command is like my top five, um, I would always get that impression like, oh, she must be, you know, mm, bossy. And, yeah, yeah, bossy or, mm -hmm. but actually the definition for that one is wanting to bring uh, a group of people forward to a goal and uh, re rephrasing what that label means to me um, as a woman and leadership. And um, so I, I love what you just said about that. Yeah. Also, I mean, now, getting back to psychology theories, which, which I don't know about, so please correct me if, if, if that's wrong, but we're used to be in tribes, right? Like we know how to encounter like social situations. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have the feeling, wow, no one actually understands me, like first of all, the question is, are you in the right organization? Um, but, but the second one is like, don't be afraid to be in a phase maybe like that. Um, it is very important to have a support group around you, like a team or a department, where you can find people be like, have you seen me in that meeting? Like, be very honest. Like, is it true what, you yeah. know, another mm -hmm. person told me? And to have these people of trust mm -hmm. is so mm -hmm. important. And yeah. in the end, you will be able to be who you are by a very slight learning process you have. Like, mm -hmm. our unconscious mind is really good in... Um, finding ourselves in groups we actually like, but this liking factor, I think, is very important. I've also, well. like, when I just started here, I wasn't used to, like, talking to so many people on teams, so I also asked for help from the ideal coaches, mm -hmm. because, I, yeah, I'm like, I don't know how to treat teams, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to moderate a meeting, I don't know how to make my point come across, and, you know, and that also helped me a lot. Awesome. So we're just about to wrap up um, and start our Q&A. So I hope there's some questions in the room. Um, but just wanted to give room for any last thoughts from any of our panelists that they really feel like I want to share right now before we wrap up. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a very hard topic. It's a challenge. But thanks to cross-functionality, we can have diverse teams and we yeah. can build great stuff and have a better work environment. So it is a challenge, but it's worth fighting for but also nobody's perfect and nobody's born knowing how to cross functionally work so right. um, everybody is entitled to errors and to have a misstep and then you learn and then mm. you are better at it amazing yeah. let's give them a round of applause <laughs> <laughs> all righty so uh any questions in the room Right here in the front. Um, yeah, first, thanks for the talk and also, um, honey, uh, thanks for the the tip that actually everyone is working during the all hands meeting because I sometimes feel bad because I do it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this gives me reassurance, so thanks. <laughs> and then I actually wanted to mention the thing about uh, being perceived as hostile or as aggressive when you're pushing your idea, when you're trying to get your idea across. Um, because this is something that I, so I'm a developer, and I come <laughs> across this, this issue also very often in different contexts. Um, but, so I work mostly with men, right? And I feel like they don't have that issue. No. I've definitely had a lot of men come across as hostile or aggressive or very pushy, and I don't feel like they ever take that into account and they never reevaluate their approaches. So I wonder if you, if you also have the perception that this is more of a women trait that we try to improve things, or if you've also perceived this in other types of people. Not really, yeah, no, prof, like the first option. I <laughs> also, I don't know, when I joined a team, 
that I'm working with, I don't want to give names, but they had a very <laughs> aggressive way to talk to each other. And sometimes, <laughs> so it was all in German, I didn't understand everything, but it sounded so like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and, I, and I, all, I had to ask once in a retro, can we maybe just talk nicer to each other? <laughs> And then when I came through with my idea, then I was labeled as aggressive. And I was like, <laughs> wait a second. Like, do you see how you speak to each other? And like, or having that s sort of speech to me. But I mean, yeah, sometimes you just have to. And I mean, nobody's perfect and things don't change overnight. Um, but yeah, sometimes taking a step back and be patient and also detaching yourself I mean, flagging it when it's not right, of course, mm. but sometimes it just it just happens, and then you, I don't know, harden up a little bit, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Thanks. To, to add just a, a little bit, I, I, my feeling is that what, what, in a positive note, what leadership means is also shifting, which I think is super positive, and I think a lot of the typically female characteristics are seen much more as valuable in leaders more and more, and I think that's for me, at least a positive sign, hmm. um, like listening and coaching and things like this that were traditionally seen as women's That's roles. True. So uh, yeah, there's definitely an element of like being labeled as a woman as more aggressive and, and seeing more negative repercussions because of that. But I, I, I feel like there is a positive shift in how we define what we value in leaders, which, which I think is, is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. super true, thanks. <laughs> Awesome. Any more questions? Hi. It's, uh, it's more a remark uh, and goes into the same direction. Uh, there was a survey and uh, they, they surveyed mixed meeting groups and when women have around 30% of the talking time, they are perceived of having 50%. Ooh. When they have 50%, <laughs> they are perceived as being pushy <laughs> and overly loud. So be very careful with feedback from Gosh. men when they say you are you are too pushy you are too loud uh, yes you can talk that into account but uh, take a step back and have a look at that and mm. and also uh, women are much more likely to think about themselves and being self-critical and mm -hmm. and to reassess what they are doing and to reevaluate and get feedback and mm. I, I know I work for an automotive company and they are very very alpha male <laughs> <laughs> it's they are, they are like that. They are shouting at each other. They are <laughs> waving around with papers and doing things. And it's all urgent. And everything is burning. And it's horrible. <laughs> I, 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 I dislike a technique that, I've, that I'm using now, but it's very effective, <laughs> it, which is speaking with a very nice voice. Yeah, I hate yes. it, but I know if yeah. I do it, they will love my idea and they will build it. And I they do that do too. I do no that resistance. Too. Hi, how are you? I hate <laughs> it, but it's it is working. So yeah. I mean, what can I do? <laughs> yeah, but, but that's it. Uh, that's uh, one of the points. Uh. And also, there's a lot of uh, research about communication, how how women and men are communicating by Deborah Tannen. She's, she's done some really amazing work on that. And uh, it's, it's, it's mostly, it's socialized, it's not innate, innate or something like that. But um, yeah, women are, are much more likely to, to reflect what, what uh, also what mm. other people said about them and things like that. And so, yeah, that's nice, take that into account, but also have a look at yourself because <laughs> you're, most of the time you are not pushy or loud or bossy. You just aren't. You just are speaking out. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. actually really nice. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much for sharing. <laughs> <laughs>two microphones. Um, I, I just wanted to tag on to that. I know, sorry, this is kind of not turned into a Q&A and more just like everyone's opinion, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say like, because I'm a very bubbly person, right? And, and I often get actually the opposite, uh, which is that people like me a lot, but they think that I don't know what I'm talking about uh. because I'm so like, hi, hi, how is everyone? Ha, ha. <laughs> and so everyone thinks, oh, how can she know anything about software engineering, right? So I kind of get the, the opposite thing. And I learned probably when I was around 25 or 26, I got to this point, I had this conversation with a friend of mine, we had coffee, and I said, look, I don't understand, like, 
I'm, I'm so nice to everyone, like why don't some people get me, like why don't some people relate to me or think I know what I'm talking about? She said, look, if you've got a big personality, if you've got really any sort of personality, um, <laughs> some people aren't going to like you, but the people who do like you are going to really like you for who you are. Yeah. So I learned a long time ago to just kind of be like, all right, I'm not going to play their game, I'm just going to be me, and they can either get it or they can not get it. So that's what I would encourage everyone else as well. Be yourself, they either get it or they yes, don't get it, yes, let it be. Yes, yes. And also maybe one point, um, nowadays we always try to reflect on ourselves, to improve and be a really, really nice person, you know, not showing any aggressiveness and whatever, but I would say w we also talk about um, the culture of allowing mistakes, but also as a person, we are never perfect. So I might have had a difficult day at home with family, with, I don't know, partners or whatever. And then I'm in my reactions, I might be a bit harsh. I might be more unfriendly or not open to these ideas. I don't say that you give it like free way, but let us allow it to be humans that mm -hmm. are not perfect in our everyday working life. I mean, there's usually always time to go back to that person, maybe the next day and saying, oh God, look, I was in such a bad mood yesterday, sorry, um, I might have chosen some wrong words and whatever. So there's a thin line walking, between uh, self-perfection and allowing yourself to be a normal human and not to put on too much pressure on yourself. And I think all your colleagues, they have been able to kind of understand these shifts in your mood and see you as a whole person. And I think it's important for us to remember this as well. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. So I wanted to ask about sh like the emotional load because mm. um, you talked a lot about communication and not uh, making assumptions about other people and also about modeling this behavior so that maybe people give it back to you. But I have this experience a lot as well where people just assume I don't know anything. So I spend a lot of time being like, oh, well, like, ask me questions or like, how are you doing? You know, and I, so I feel like I carry the emotional load for the whole team. And what do you do when you feel overwhelmed by that or just sick of it? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to answer? Yeah. Help me. <laughs> Go um, for it. I vent. <laughs> That's what yeah. I do. Uh, like we are four people in my team and we have dailies, very long dailies, by the way, like <laughs> almost an hour long. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy for four people. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I bent and I'm like, hey, I had this talk with this team or like this person and it's like this person is not listening to me or I've been trying to get this person to get in a call with me to talk about something and this person never appears. Uh, what the fuck do I do? Um, and then they're like, oh yeah, this has happened to me too. And I'm like, okay, so it's not only me. And then we try to find a solution or like just talking about it and say that I'm not the only person affected by this helps. Like, Yeah, and I would, even from my personal experience as a team lead for engineers of about 11, um, I constantly, I feel like there's a lot of emotional labor and I didn't really even know this word until this year in a coaching session mm -hmm. where a coach just said, that sounds like a lot of emotional labor. And I was like, what's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, carrying the weight for the people that you're trying to make them comfortable, to have them understand, to be highly empathetic. And um, my empathy on Gallup is also number 34. So it actually takes a lot of energy uh, mm -hmm. for me to do it, even though I can be empathetic. And I think there's a point where you can also just say, I have a clear boundary here, and I don't need to carry the weight of everybody. There are some people where I can say in this relationship, whether this is for me personal or in work, I have to recognize what relationships do I really want to invest in, 
and that I say this is worthwhile and this is something where there's a mutual respect. And there are other relationships where I just say, I do not want to carry that labor there. Um, again, personal or at work. And sometimes it feels unavoidable because you're gonna, you can't always choose your colleagues, I guess, and you have to work with certain people. But I think I, from myself, have to reflect where do I say is my line, my bucket where I say that's enough for me and not feel like I have to apologize for that uh, and, and allow myself to have a balance with my mental space because otherwise you burn out mm -hmm. and um, venting definitely helps and getting a good support group that you can just like yeah. blah, unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think on a normal basis, it, it helps to think about, am I really wanting to invest in this right now? Is this the right relationship to invest into or shall I shift my energy somewhere else? To, to build on this, I also, th what's helped me is sort of to be very conscious of what meetings do I leave feeling energized, mm -hmm. feeling like I got something out of it, feeling like, oh wow, I'm, I'm motivated and what meetings less and just monitoring that and sort of, s you know, sort of analyzing, okay, why did I feel less energy there? And, and just making sure you moderate that and make sure you're putting enough things in your day that give you energy. That's, mm. that's sort of helped me. There's yeah. some meetings you can't avoid, right? So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have like, have a lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah. identifying what, what is it about the meeting mm. that takes your en energy and, and how can you better that or what things yeah. are not working there. Yeah. Which sounds like more emotional labor, but it's a good investment <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. to reflect and think about. Well, we are actually just about time. I see your hands, but we definitely have more time on the roof and we'll have some drinks and cocktails. And <laughs> actually we have a break uh, coming up next. I guess, uh, Anna, if you'd like to yeah. join us here. Yeah, we've got a break now until a quarter past six. So again, we're a little, little behind, but that's all right. Uh, so if everyone could come back at quarter past six and until then, can we have a big round of applause, please, for <laughs> our panelists. <laughs>